have one. Yeah. So she's checking the uh, okay. so um, this is Jackie. Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Roll call. Got it. Hang on one second. Mayor Campbell. Here. Vice Mayor Samaglia. Here. We have no independent. Okay, Commissioner Vignolo. Present. Commissioner Daly. Here. Commissioner Carter. Present. Deputy City Manager Birdsell. Uh, present. City Attorney Hearn. Here. Folks, uh, if you will, uh, at this point in time, we typically take a couple minutes to have a moment of silence for you to say your own prayers. So I'd like to have a moment of silence and remember whoever you want to remember or what you want. Thank you. Uh, now let's do the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, why don't we have our fire chief lead us in the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now before we get started, uh, I want to tell everybody uh, Mission, or Vice Mayor Simagli and I got the memo saying we have to wear a light suit today. Uh, but Commissioner Daly, Commissioner Vignola forgot to wear theirs. I was told to wear orange. Well, you're <laughs> for gun violence. You got. Oh, oh that's right. It is gun violence. Well, you're you're smart. We're not. My boxers are orange, Mr. Mayor. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to start the meeting off. Um, we are uh, pleased to have our property appraiser, Marty Keir, here today. And he's going to give us some words of wisdom to tell us uh, that our property values are going up um, and it's going to help Coral Springs. Absolutely. Mr. Appraiser, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a, a handout. May I hand it out to the sure. commission? Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and to the Commission. I want to thank you so much for having me today. And I have to tell you, this is a beautiful city hall. It really is. It's the second time I've been here. And I have to tell you, um, it really must make the residents of Coral Springs so proud. Uh, because I have to tell you, Coral Springs is one of, our, uh, one of the biggest economic engines in our 31 cities. And the fact that you have a city hall this beautiful is really just shows that Coral Springs is up and coming, doing a great job, and uh, is really wonderful for the, for the people that live here. Uh, I also want to thank you all for your great service. And I think uh, some of the things I'm going to be able to tell you I think really shows that Coral Springs is doing very well and is on a trajectory uh, that I think will make uh, your residents very proud. Um, but before that, if it's okay, I'd like to just give a brief description of what we do in our office uh, for the residents and the folks that are watching. Uh, again, my name is Marty Kerr. I'm honored to be the Broward County Property Appraiser. And really, the function of the property appraiser is three things. The first thing that we do is we determine the assessed value of every piece of property in Broward County, whether it's residential, commercial, tangible personal property, or centrally assessed property, which are railroads. And the reason that's important is because when folks pay their property taxes, the amount of taxes they pay is the relationship between the value of the property that we set and the tax rate set by their local government. So the higher the value of the property, the more taxes folks pay. The lower the value of the property, the lower amount of taxes they pay. So the, the thing that we want to do is just make sure we get it right. And Broward County, it's a big place. There's more people here than 13 states, the District of Columbia, and all U.S. territories except Puerto Rico, and we have more parcels than many states. And even though the 200 and some odd people that work in our office who are mostly appraisers do a great job, uh, mistakes can occur. 
And so I tell folks, if you think we've made a mistake with the value of your property, give us a holler. Come on down to our office or we'll come to you. And if we made a mistake, we'll adjust your value accordingly. If not, we'll let you know exactly how we arrived at any particular value. The second thing that we do is we give tax saving exemptions to folks that qualify. And there are a lot of exemptions under Florida law. And it's my goal as the Broward County property appraiser to find every person in Broward County entitled to a tax saving exemption and to give it to them because they've earned it. The biggest one is the homestead exemption. If you live here in Coral Springs and it's your primary residence, you get a homestead exemption. What that means is $50,000 of value will be taken off the tax roll that you won't pay taxes on. But most importantly, it'll make sure you'll never be taxed out of your home because the value you're taxed on can't go up more than 3% a year or the consumer price index, whichever is lower. Once you get that, there are many other exemptions as well. You have widow's exemptions, low-income senior exemptions. You have first responder exemptions and veterans exemptions and other disability exemptions. And you can stack all those exemptions uh, to reduce your property tax bill, which uh, is very important to give people the opportunity to make ends meet and to uh, feed their families. And I always tell folks is if they go on our website at bcpa.net or if they get our trim notice in the mail in August and they're not getting an exemption they think they're entitled to, give us a call, come on down to our office, and we'll make sure you get it. The third thing that we do is just as important. You know, when people are entitled to a tax saving exemption, they should get it. Uh, conversely, if folks are frauding the system, they shouldn't get an exemption. And we also have a very aggressive fraud division that goes throughout the county every single day, and it cracks down on people who are cheating the system. And if folks are cheating the system and they're getting an exemption they're not entitled to, if they're frauding the system, then what our folks do is they take away the illegal exemption, they back tax them up to 10 years, they include a 50% penalty and 15% interest. And we consider this uh, job very important because we look at it as safeguarding our taxpayer dollars to make sure that only those people entitled to these very valuable exemptions get them. And to give you an idea, our fraud division has put about $7 billion of value back on the tax roll, which equates to millions of dollars of taxes paid every year. And we've collected about $70 million in back taxes from folks who are cheating the system and return that to our taxpayers. Those are really our three main functions, but I also have here uh, a handout that really kind of shows where the county is right now and also where Coral Springs is. And I think what you'll see is Coral Springs is doing very, very well. Uh, the first page of the handout is really just, I think, an interesting page. And uh, this page uh, isn't what the county commission's utilizing to determine its budget. It's just basically if you took all of the residential and commercial property in Broward County and you sold it on the open market, you would get approximately for the 2017 tax year right about $250 billion. You'll notice that for 2018, countywide, property values have went up about 7.06% to about $267 billion. What that basically means is there's a lot of property changing hands, and also there's a lot of new construction throughout Broward County, especially truthfully in the Fort Lauderdale area, where they have a lot of construction on the beach and on Las Olas, which is really driving up our property values. Uh, the next page is what the county commission is utilizing to determine how much money it needs in its budget this year to provide services to the people of Broward County. In 2017, you'll notice the taxable value was about $167 billion. In 2018, there's been about an 8% increase in value to about $180.3 billion. Now what that means is if the county commission keeps its millage rate the same, which is currently 5.4623, if they keep it the same, they don't reduce it and they don't increase it, that basically means that they're gonna get, they're gonna, they're gonna get another $74,339,000 more this year than last year. That's a hefty chunk of money. And what's interesting about that is the vast majority of that is not being paid by about 400,000 homeowners who are homesteaded in Broward County because their values can only go up 2.1% this year. It's really being driven by all the new construction out there and property changing hands. So it also shows that our market right now is very, very good when it comes to real estate. Uh, the next page shows basically the countywide exemption counts that we have here in Broward County. It's just an interesting number. There's almost 400,000 people with a homestead exemption. You have about 352,000 with an additional homestead exemption and almost 23,000 low-income seniors that have an additional exemption. But one thing that I always like to mention is that we have 2,153 full exemptions for veterans who are totally and permanently disabled. And what I love about that number is that means that 2,153 2 of those American heroes have made Broward County home and they're fully exempt from taxation. Uh, the next page before I get to Coral Springs is just something I like to highlight. You know, we don't have uh, satellite offices for our office. Uh, for me, I find those to be a waste of taxpayer dollars to have offices uh, all around the county. What we do have, though, is a mobile and exemption information team that travels throughout the county every single day to bring what we do to the residents of Broward County. And uh, so far this year, they've attended, since January, about 488 events, and we've been able to help about 83,000 residents just from going around the county and talking to folks and signing them up for tax saving exemptions. We've also had about 16,000 people visit our office since January. We've given an additional 41,000 new homesteads. There's been 9,300 portability applications. 
And uh, when it comes to veterans, mil military disability, and widowed uh, exemptions, we've given another 6,390. So we're very proud of the work that we do because it really directly impacts every person in Broward County. Uh, the next few pages uh, pertain specifically to Coral Springs. Now the first page is not the number that you're utilizing when you determine your millage rate this year for your budget. This is basically, if you took all the residential and commercial property in Coral Springs and you sold it on the open market, uh, for 2017, you would have got approximately $13,807,000,000. That's a lot of money. This is a big city though. And you'll notice though, there's for 2018, there's been an increase of about 6.72% in value to about $14.7 billion. It really shows that Coral Springs is on the right trajectory. It's going up uh, because uh, this is really a place that people love to live, live in. Uh, the next page is the number that you'll be utilizing when you determine how much money you need in your budget this year and when you determine your millage rate. So you'll notice in 2017, uh, the taxable value that you would set your millage rate on was $9,303,000,000. Uh, you'll notice that for 2018, so far there's been a 7.3% increase in value to almost $10 billion. So what that means for the city of Coral Springs is your millage rate uh, for, the last, for this year is 5.8732. So if you don't decrease it or increase it, uh, you would get approximately $3,951,000,000 more dollars this year than last year. That's a hefty chunk of money uh, that you can utilize to provide uh, excellent services to your residents. Uh, the next page kind of gives you a snapshot of where Coral Springs is. There are about almost 25,000 people with a homestead exemption, uh, almost 23,000 people with an additional homestead exemption. Uh, you have 526 low-income seniors who have an additional exemption. And I'd also like to just mention this. You also have 149 American heroes who are totally and permanently disabled veterans that have made Coral Springs their home as well. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, the next page I just thought was kind of interesting. And this is just kind of give you a little bit more information about uh, where Coral Springs is right now. And you'll notice that in 2018, the average value for a single family home in Coral Springs that we've determined, the market value would be $353,000. Basically, that would be the amount of money that you can get on the open market that in an arm's length transaction. Uh, the assessed value is approximately $271,000. Uh, that's what's being taxed for the average family home. Uh, when it comes to the average value for condominiums, uh, the average market value is approximately 110,000, and the average assessed value is approximately 84,000. And then the next page, basically shows the two top new constructions that were added to the tax roll this year in the city of Coral Springs. And you'll notice that there was a 250 unit apartment building at 10890 West Sample Road. And that put approximately $42,890,000 on the tax roll of value. And you also had a 179 unit apartment building at 9001 West Sample Road that added approximately 31379000 to the tax roll. And the last thing I wanted to bring up, Mr. Mayor, if it's okay before I answer any questions that you all have, is you know we love social media in our office. I find it is the best, most economically responsible way to reach the residents because it's free. And so if anybody wants to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, whatever we have, uh, we're all at the same handle, which is at Marty Care BCPA. That's at M-A-R-T-Y-K-I-A-R-B-C-P-A. Uh, with that said, Mr. Mayor, I just want to thank you and this wonderful city commission for the great work that you're doing. You know, I had the great privilege of representing Coral Springs when I was in the State House of Representatives. And now I get to represent again as property appraiser. And I have to tell you, this really is a special place to live. So thank you all so much for having me. And are there any questions that I can answer? I know you have a long meeting, but I just appreciate being here. Yeah, you've got to tell people to turn their phones off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marty, I see your dad's here. Yes. Can you introduce your dad to everybody? I will. I actually have my wonderful father, Monroe Care. Uh, he is, I think, the greatest guy in the face of the earth. Um, I always tell folks that I'm not a conceited person by any means, but when it comes to my dad, I feel like he walks on water. And, uh, you know, he was actually the former mayor of Davie. And, um, and also uh, city attorney. Absolutely, the city attorney. And now he is happily retired and going on cruises and just enjoying himself. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, actually, as you know, my wonderful sister uh, is employed here as well. And I know that she loves it here. And she always tells me that Coral Springs is no, like no, her family as well. introduce your sister. Oh, thank you. And my sister is Casey Lee. <laughs> is, you know, Casey, for everybody, is our arborist. City Force. Let me, let, me, let me ask those kids back there, what is an arborist? <laughs> she protects your trees. You know. She counts and she knows all trees. Anything about them, she knows it. You know what, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, recently there was a person uh, that spoke to me that said, um, you know, uh, Marty, 
Um, I know uh, your sister works uh, for the city of Coral Springs. I think she thought her last name was Care. And she goes, you know, I don't know what she is, but they do great over there. And he goes, except there was this one person that would not let me cut down my tree. That's the only person I had a problem with. Like, I have no idea who that is, you know? <laughs> so, but but uh, we do appreciate it. And this is, like I said, a, a truly tremendous place. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anybody have any questions? I, I just wanted to say I was reading a um, NAR, National Association of Realtors report yesterday that said that values, home values have gone up 42% since 2012. And I know that sounds incredible, but that's a recovery number from when we bottomed out. Yes. Absolutely. So we and are slightly above, but uh, peaking out. Absolutely, and, and Commissioner Carter, and, and uh, you know, you are, as, as I know, just a wonderful real estate agent and very involved in uh, the real estate community, and you're 100% right. You know, I'll tell you what is great now. You know, as you know, with the real estate market, you just never know what can happen, but it looks like it's very strong at this time. And this fortunately, there are uh, lots of safeguards now with mortgage companies and others uh, to make sure that uh, when somebody buys a property, that ultimately they can afford that property. And so, um, you know, I would, uh, as you, you never you never know what can happen, but uh, fortunately it doesn't look like uh, the bubble's gonna burst any time. So I'm very happy about that. Getting loose again. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today and uh, we're glad to hear the good news. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you again for the great work that you all do. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. you have a better one. We have the young ladies in the back row come join us. And, and your coach. Testing. So this is the uh, Coral Springs Charter School girls varsity tennis team. Um, we're here to recognize them because of some of their successes they've had uh, this season, um, including to being district runner-up. That uh, was the first time in the, in the history of the school for the girls. It's also with a regional champion, which is the first time in uh, the history of the school, and uh, they made their first appearance in the state tournament. The interesting thing about this team is um, – this is the varsity team, like high school varsity. Um, the, I think, was it three out of five of the starting members are, are in middle school? Four? Three. Um, so three out of five are in middle school still. So this, this program has got a very, very uh, bright future up ahead of them. And uh, we're proud to uh, have you guys sit there and represent the city. So would you like to say a few words? or? Any of you who have been around uh, have probably actually worked for the city, have seen them practicing on the courts, and uh, they're finally old enough now to play varsity tennis, and uh, two of them happen to be in sixth grade. The other half of my team is uh, at school still at transition, so they're just gonna be in high school, so we have a long time coming for hopefully a really good representation from all the things that you guys do here at Coral Springs. So thank you so much for giving us this opportunity and thank you. Could you introduce our Absolutely. young ladies? Uh, this right here is Junie C in sixth grade going to seventh. This is Madison Clark. She's in sixth grade going to seventh who is actually undefeated in postseason and uh, beating juniors, seniors, all of them. And then Madeline Barbanes who's in ninth grade going to tenth. Great. And this young lady I've known for quite a while. She did dance with my daughter, and now they go to school together. So it's nice to see you being so successful and, and reading about all your accolades. So um, this is the special recognition to the girls' varsity tennis team at Coral Springs Charter School. This historic year for the girls' varsity tennis program at Coral Springs Charter School has been a, a year of first. Your 12-3 and three record is admirable and led the team – led – to the team being named district runner-up and regional champion for the first time in school history, as well as led the team's first appearance in a state tournament. We are proud of you and all of your accomplishments and signed by the entire commission. I'm gonna hand that to you, just because I want it. There we go. You have to be in the middle. Yeah. Turn around. A round of applause.
Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. Commissioner Daly, could you come on down and join me? Thanks, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Randy. Come on down. Uh, Mr. Mayor, so this recognition is for the uh, Little League Baseball Challenger Division in Coral Springs. And if you're not familiar, this program has actually been around for 28 years. Randy's one of the founders and has been the president for the last 23 years. Um, this is an awesome program in the city of Coral Springs that has grown by leaps and bounds, provides those with physical and developmental disabilities to, uh, to play baseball. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to, to Randy, uh, and then we'll get back to the recognition so we can talk a little bit about his league. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Challenger is a baseball program strictly for special needs kids. And we did start it about 1990 in Broward County, about 25 or 30 kids, and now we have close to 200 kids, which is, have teams in cities, Parkland, Coral Springs, Tamarack, Sunrise, Pembroke Pines, and Weston. So we stretch the whole county, and some of the kids from the eastern part of the county play with just those teams. Our kids travel to each of those fields and play, and I did recently divide the kids up into juniors and seniors because the seniors are getting pretty big, and we're noticing the juniors when they're running around the bases. So we kind of had to separate them to make sure nobody got hurt. But everybody pitches, everybody hits, everybody fields, everybody scores. And it's really a wonderful program watching these kids. Their faces just light up. It's kids with any type of disability. So I have kids in wheelchairs. We have kids that are fine physically but have mental issues. But we get them all to play baseball and just provide them with all the help they need. And thanks to private sponsors like the Coral Springs Community Chest, we provide the kids with uniforms, equipment, pictures, trophies, a uh, night at a Marlins game, a festival in Fort Myers, a couple other things, a year-end picnic that we have 400 people at, all at no charge to the families. Everything is privately donated. So it's really, it's very heartwarming to watch these kids play. And the program was originally set up for kids school age, five to 18 but nobody ever leaves my program. So I have kids like my son who's 37 who's still playing and we have kids that are in their 40s and 50s now and it's really just grown into a real nice program. And as I said, about 200 kids all together and we try to do a lot of things with them. We play our games from March to May. Everybody has a good time. It's one of the programs where you know, if I go to a little league meeting and they complain about the umpires and they complain about the parents, I don't. My parents scream and yell for all both teams. They're thrilled to just see the kids out in the field. We don't need umpires because everybody's safe. And it's, uh, it's really a very nice program. And I do appreciate this recognition. It means a great deal to me. Can I ask a question? If you're under 40, you're a kid. <laughs> Does that mean Commissioner Daly and Commissioner Vignola are both kids? <laughs> Sometimes I still act like a kid, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All right. Um, I, Randy, I just want you to know real quick how this came to my attention. One of, your, one of, one of the parents uh, reached out and said, you know, Randy has poured his heart and soul into this league uh, and really is deserving of recognition. So uh, that's, that's a testament to you and, and the time that you've spent, uh, the years you've spent making our community a better place. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, special recognition for Randy Hipschenman. Little League Baseball Challenger Division. In, more, in your more than 28 years of service to the Little League Baseball Challenger Division, you have greatly impacted the community, especially those with physical and developmental disabilities. The growth and success of the program is profound and your dedication is commendable. Thank you for making a positive difference in so many lives. Signed June 6, 2018 by the Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Commission, and City of Cool Springs. Thank you very much. Dale, could you come on up here? We're going to do the uh, bright spot drawing winners. And you got to explain this. There's one right here. Because I'm looking at this, and it looks like we've got a lot of people from the police department. 
Was this a random drawer? Yes, it's a random drawing mirror. <laughs> and we can only draw from what's being submitted. So um, every quarter we recognize our great employees for doing an excellent job going above and beyond to support others, whether it's internally or externally. And today I'm pleased to present several employees, many from the police department. And I'm gonna go ahead and call up names. We have a few folks who couldn't be here. And if you wanna grab those mirrors, I don't think it is. Um, and you can clap whenever you want or you can wait till they all get up here, it's up to you. First person I'd like to call is Jessica Apple from the police department. Jess? Jessica's here, because I talked to her earlier. She's one of our dispatchers. Jessica, uh, this is special recognition for going above and beyond your regular duties as a City of Coral Springs employee and for being a bright spot winner. Thank you. you want to stay up here, we're going to have everybody come together. Okay. Uh, the next person, Anne Marie Caruso, Police Department. There she is. Amory's with our crime scene unit. She's CIS. CCIS. CSIS. CSIS. CSI. Well, whatever it is. She does a great job. This is special recognition for going above and beyond your regular duties as a City of Coral Springs employee and for being a bright spot winner. Thank you, Anne Marie. Sandra Chetty, Development Services. Sandra, for going above and beyond your regular duties as a City of Coral Springs employee and for bring, being a Bright Spot winner, we give you the special recognition. Randall Keyshock, Parks and Recreation. Going above and beyond your regular duties as City of Coral Springs employee and for being a bright spot winner. Thank you, sir. Carla Kimiatek, Police Department. How come the fleet service don't have anybody here? They got the whole department coming up. <laughs> Carla. For going above and beyond your regular duties as City of Coral Springs employee and for being a bright spot winner, we give you the special recognition. Carla is our communication officer too. So whenever anything happens in town and somebody gets on TV, it's her. Justin Shives, Information Technology. Justin, for going above and beyond your regular duties as a City of Coral Springs employee and for being a bright spot winner, we give you the special recognition. He's the guy to make sure our computers are actually working. Yeah. <laughs> and we change our passwords on a monthly basis. Pat Huber, Development Services. Pat, for being or going above and beyond your regular duties as City of Coral Springs employee and for being a bright spot winner, we give you the special recognition. Um, Pat is one of our code enforcement officers, and uh, you do a great job. Thank you very much. You all do a great job. We have three other people who couldn't be here today. I just want to make sure I mention them, and we will work with their departments to get them their certificates. Uh, first, Dale Getze, Information Technology. Kim Valdez, Police Department, and Chad Whittington, Police Department.
Yeah. You want to say hello to the rest of the commission? It's already done. <laughs> Different setup. It's a different setup. We're going to have to figure something out. Let me just get you all down here. <laughs> I love that. Okay. We do have a whole division here today, and it's the uh, Public Works Fleet Division. Uh, and Dale, are you going to help me with this one? Steve, are you going to? Oh, Rich. S Steve Harbin, come on up too. Everybody from the fleet division. Could you all shake hands with the commissioners before we get this done? <laughs> it's only confidential, sir. Thanks. Thanks for all your work. You do a great job. Don't leave. Just you do a great job. Thank you. How are we doing? Oh yeah. Good to see you. Do a great job. Don't leave. Borrow that hat. You guys do a oh, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you do. Thanks for everything you do. All right, Rich. You're on. Air five. Air five. Thank you for everything you do. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Mayor and Commission, for the last 16 years, uh, Governing, Governing Magazine has sponsored a program called the 100 Best Fleets in America. And about a year ago, after Public Works was uh, achieved national accreditation, Steve Harbin came to me and said, Rich, they've got this program called 100 Best Fleets, and I'd like to take a shot at it. So I said, sure, Steve. So Steve put together a writing team that consisted of himself, my ace technical writer, Peter Foy, and Shannon Lay, and they submitted an application, I want to say, this past January. And it was a very demanding application. It really put us through some tough technical requirements, including accountability, our use of technology, our creativity, our celebration of success, our performance recognition, our competitive cost, our staff development, and our resource stewardship. In early May, Steve was notified that they were recognized as the number five fleet in America for fleet management. And for that, I'm very proud of, of our team. And ladies and gentlemen, these people here are responsible to maintain 1,325 pieces of equipment in the city, and I'm proud to recognize them today by the city commission. Steve, could you say a couple words before I give you this recognition? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm very proud to be part of this, and I'm very happy with our team. I, I would like to thank them for all their hard work, dedication. Uh, Peter helped us tremendously as well. And if it wasn't for everybody up here, we wouldn't have this award. Thank you. Great. Uh, this is a special recognition from the City of Coral Springs. Congratulations to the City of Coral Springs Public Works Fleet Division for their inclusion in a list of the 100 best fleets by Governing Magazine for 2018. With 38,000 public fleets in the country, your division ranked fifth based on your level of performance and improvement within the fleet industry. Your commitment to excellence and fiscal responsibility and customer service is commendable. Steve, I'm going to hand this to you, but belongs to all of you. Congratulations. Thank Give them a round of applause. Thanks, guys and gals. Now we have a, well, we have a whole mess of departments here today. Code compliance, come on up. Thanks. Do a great job. Look at this. 
<laughs> one week on the job and already here. Right. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> <Recognizing, yeah. laughs> All right, Susie, you're on. Okay, this, uh, as you know, the Code Compliance Division is part of the Devel Development Services Department, and this is a week that we uh, appreciate what they do. It's not an easy job to be a Code Compliance Officer, so I'm very happy that uh, this is done every year because th this is a job that's not an easy one sometimes. So I wanted to hand it over to Pat Uber who wants to describe a little bit more about the week. Thank you, Susie. Yes, we're very proud. Um, FACE is the organization, Florida Association of Code Enforcement, um, that oversees our accreditation. We have to have 16 hours of um, CEHs uh, every two years to keep up with what we do. And this is a great team that has been established. We had three new um, Officers Dan at the end, Carrie here next to him, and Tanya here in the center. Matt is only, what, Matt, a year in. Um, and they are very quick to learn. Uh, matter of fact, the three new ones are even out on the road as we speak now. We're trying to get them uh, acclimated to what we do. They're um, quick, quick learners. Um, we're also back during the chili cook-off. We won the sustainability award, and <laughs> I can say they really endured a lot. We've had three different types of uh, processes that we're learning uh, computer-wise, and my husband and I always coached soccer, so we used to tell them, you're only as good as your weakest player, and they stepped up to the plate with all the new ones that were coming in. They're helping them train. Uh, they ride together, they go out together, they just really sit together, and, and we learn a lot from one another, so we are very proud of um, what we do, and again, I want to jump on Marty's, what he's saying about the, um, the value of the properties, and I think we do help in that respect. And also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Jackie Foster, who's the manager of the Code Compliance Division. She's at a, a track at conference right now, learning more about this wonderful new program we have. <laughs> Commissioner Daly. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Can I just jump in for one second? Um, you guys are the, you guys and gals are the unsung heroes uh, of this city, and you don't get enough credit. Um, you know, the, the bulk, I would say, of, of complaints that I get every once in a while are, you know, code, code's, you know, bearing down on me, and they're, they're picking a fight with me individually, and, and yada, 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 and, and you have to take a lot of those conversations with a grain of salt, because you are out there, you are the first line of defense to ensure that our property values stay up, that our communities stay nice, um, you are the reason that it's a nice place to, to live uh, in, this, in this city. So um, you don't get thanked enough. So, so from, from the bottom of my heart and everybody up here, I think, uh, uh, thank you for all you do. We know it's not easy. And, uh, and thanks for, for being out there. Thank you. All right, I'd like to read this special proclamation. The Code Compliance Division provides for the safety, health, and welfare of our citizens in this community through the enforcement of codes and ordinances which also helps to preserve and enhance the aesthetics citywide. We encourage Coral Springs residents to join us in expressing appreciation for the dedication and outstanding service provided by our code compliance officers, administrative staff, and volunteer code rangers. Therefore, we, the city of Coral Springs, proclaim June 4th through 8th, 2018, as Code Compliance Appreciation Week. Pat, I'm going to give it to you. Kathy, I know you're here too. You want to say something? I just want to say I'm really proud of the team that we have today. Their um, dedication to the city is remarkable, and I just want to thank them as well. Thank you all. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Take a picture. Don't leave yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're up to uh, public comment. Do we have any speakers signed up? Mayor, I have one signed speaker. That would be Carl Prescott. Mr. Prescott, welcome. Before you put me on the clock, I want to say something nice. <laughs> you know, not many cities do citizens have the opportunity to get up and talk like we do here. 
So I really appreciate this. And I do think we need a little more than three minutes because not everybody's from New York. And I don't talk that fast. And like the mayor said one day, he said, uh, I'm going to give you a Georgia minute. <laughs> and so <laughs> that helped me. But the thing I wanted to ask today was um, the time for fireworks, illegal fireworks are coming up. And the mayor said that he was in Tallahassee and he brought this particular subject up up there. And the lobbyists for the fireworks industry got on him like ugly got, ugly got on Abe. That wasn't his exact words, but you know what I'm talking about. So I'd appreciate it with the big signs that we've got up right now. I noticed the ones that are saying, kick it and stick it and lick it or whatever it is. But by now we could put up the warnings about fireworks being illegal and there will be some repercussions or something if you use them. So we have all this time. So I'm respectfully asking that we do put up the signs now and caution people about the use of illegal fireworks. If we don't keep it before them all the time, it'll only get worse. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Carl. Anybody else? Anybody else want to speak? Oh, we got a good uh, fire chief and we've got a good police chief and they'll do what we can if we'll give them the help that they need. All right, then let's move on to uh, the consent agenda. Move consent. I'd like to uh, take out item number nine so we can talk about it a little bit. Move the balance. Second. Uh, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, passes unanimously. Um, item number nine deals with, unfortunately, some of the tragedy that happened with uh, February 14th. And the North Springs Little League um, wrote a letter. Um, and is Jason Rossoff here? Um, and I want to read his letter. Um, my name is Jason Rossoff, president of North Springs Little League. On March 2nd, 2018, our league had our opening night ceremonies. While usually a time for celebration, this year being the case more than ever, with our league's first Little League National Championship, we spent most of the night honoring the victims of the Stoneman Douglas shootings. One of the victims, Joaquin Oliver, better known as Guyak, did I pronounce that right? Guac. 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 Was a player in our league for many, many years. We wanted to do something special for his family and always remember him. With an okay from the family, we dedicated one of our fields, field number four, and his name for our season. We had a home plate made up, similar to those that hang around the fields of North Community Park, and plan on hanging it on the backstop of field four and referring to the field from this point forward as the Joaquin... Guac. Like guacamole? Guac. 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 I also should say this, my niece actually taught Joaquin when he was in third grade, and she, he was a very special child to her. Um, Oliver Field, or simply the Guac, if I said it correct. The family was so touched by the dedication that the father, Manuel Oliver, joined us for the opening night ceremony and actually took the time to say a few words. It was a very special night. We presented Manny and his wife and daughter with the guac home plate, and they took it with them. So we are currently in the process of making another to hang on the fences at North Community Park. This is not a permanent sign, and we simply will be a tie wrap to the fence like our sponsor's banners. 
I am writing to request the city of Coral Springs make our dedication a more permanent and possibly come with more permanent, prominent fixture at the baseball fields at North Community Park. The consideration is greatly appreciated. Um, and what we're doing is uh, we are approving as a commission uh, naming field number four for the uh, Joaquin Oliver or Guac field. Um, and Jason, I thank you for bringing this to us. Um, do I hear a motion? I'll move. Okay. Second. All right, moved by Commissioner Vignola, seconded by Vice Mayor Smaglia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. <coughs> And while we're on this issue, um, I, I want to tell everybody here, we, on last Friday, um, Mr. Engel and I had the honor of representing the city in the naming of a basketball court after Jim Hickman, who was a long supporter and, and actually started our basketball leagues at Coral Springs. Uh, so let's move on to uh, policy formation direction. Um, Mr. Hearn, we're going to go to Ordinance 2018-104, uh, second reading for telecommunications. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I'm going to read Ordinance 2018-04. I'm also going to read Resolution 2018-029, which is a companion resolution setting some certain fees, and they'll take uh, separate motions uh, to approve. <clears throat> Ordinance 2018-104 is an ordinance of the City of Coral Springs, Florida, amending the Land Development Code of the City of Coral Springs by amending Section 101, entitled Special Exception from Literal Enforcement of the Land Development Code, <clears throat> amending Section 190.1, entitled Schedule of Civil Penalties, amending Section 1901, entitled Improvements Within Public Rights Away, amending Section 250105, entitled Definitions, amending Section 250129, entitled Accessory Structures, amending Section 250130 entitled Height Limits, amending Section 250153 entitled Procedures and Requirements for Conditional Uses before the Planning and Zoning Board and the City Commission, repealing Chapter 25, Article 14 entitled Telecommunication Towers and Antennas, creating Article 16 entitled Communication Facilities, repealing Chapter 20 of the Code of Ordinances entitled Telecommunications, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date, the request to adopt that um, and the resolution, the companion is 2018-29 to resolution of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, establishing administrative fees for communication facilities pursuant to Chapter 25, Article 16 of the Land Development Code, providing for conflict, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. <clears throat> and as this commission may recall, um, we had already had our public hearing uh, at first reading. We had another meeting with the Industrial uh, Industry Working Group. Uh, Mayor, you were involved in that as well. We have made some changes. Um, uh, we've looked at other communities and uh, made some changes based on that. Uh, we have kept our concealment. We've increased the tower height to the applicable zoning district, but require a minimum of two service provi providers for original construction and a minimum of three for any future eligible facilities. Um, I want to commend uh, um, staff uh, my office, uh, Sherry and Nick, and uh, community development staff uh, for working uh, tirelessly on this. Um, I do believe uh, it protects the citizens. It's, it's the strictest ordinance that we know being, being proffered, but it is, it is uh, under the law, um, certainly enforceable. So uh, based on that, Mayor, uh, request uh, to approve that ordinance as well as the resolution. Okay, I also would like to personally thank Sherry and Nick um, the industry, I don't know if you all know this, asked for hundreds of changes. Uh, we uh, agreed with some of them and some of them we did not. And I've had multiple meetings with uh, the lobbyists for these industries. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm proud of our city attorney staff for getting this done. Uh, we originally had this out to a private law firm. <coughs> And I'm going to tell you honestly, I think that our staff did better than the private law firm. Uh, so congratulations. Do I hear any motions? I move to approve. Moved by Vice Mayor Samaglia, seconded by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Anybody you, Mayor. opposed? Me. Aye. Okay, four to one, it passes. Thank you, Mayor. That's the ordinance, and if I could have a motion for the resolution. 
Before before I say, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just um my my concern, the reason why I voted no was the fact that we changed the height from 80 to 100, and I just want everyone to understand that when it goes from 80 to 100, that means total height will end up being 120 because you're allowed to put a 20 foot extra on for a um, to allow another carrier on those towers. So go really it's when we originally last time we had thought 80, right, and and now we're going to allow up to 120, and that's that's my issue. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, the next item. Mayor, just a motion on the resolution as well, a separate motion. Well, we got to do a motion on resolution 2018-029. Uh, all in favor? Or who moves it? I'll move it. Moved by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Vice Mayor Smaglia. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay, pass this four to one. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next item, uh, amendment to the interlocal agreement for solid waste disposal support services. Mr. Michaud. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. Before I begin the presentation, I just want to recognize someone in the audience that came here today. I want to recognize Bob Healy. He is with Wheelabrator. He is available for any questions during or after my presentation today. Um, the request before you is to approve the first amendment to the interlocal agreement for solid waste disposal support services with Broward County. Uh, a little background, since 1987, Coral Springs along with 26 other cities signed an interlocal agreement with the county committing its municipal solid waste to the resource recovery system facilities, which at the time consisted of two waste to energy plants operated by Wheelabrator. That ILA expired on July 2nd, 2013. In June 2012, the county entered into five-year agreements with Wheelabrator and Sun Bergeron, giving cities the disposal options for their solid waste. Back in uh, at that time, Coral Springs looked at a split approach to maximize its recycling potential and send its garbage to Wheelabrator and its bulk waste, yard waste, construction demolition debris to Sun Bergeron. In 2018, just a few months ago, Broward County elected not to renew the agreement with Sun Bergeron due to the ongoing litigation between the parties. Uh, county then issued a first amendment to the ILA, which is before you, giving cities the option to direct all of its solid waste to Willibrator. ILA runs concurrent with the Willibrator agreement through 2023, and the county has the option to renew to 2028. The ILA affords two price packages a hard disposal cost of 4504 per ton with the with the electrical revenue share or a lower disposal cost of 4398 um, staff has monitored the electrical revenue uh, values and would recommend the lower disposal cost of 4398 based on price the uh, past practice past prices with the electrical revenue um, directing our solid waste to Willibrator still gets us a 58 percent recycling credit which is as per Florida Department of Environmental Protection waste to energy formula. Given that, the staff recommends approval of the first amendment to the ILA with Broward County for solid waste disposal. I'm happy to take any questions. Commissioner Court. Thank you. I'm just a little confused on the re recycling component of it. Mm. Right. This has, this has no recycling component to it. What you're thinking the residential recyclables is the next item number 18. Okay, I'm fine. What's the difference between what we're paying now versus this? Uh, we're paying basically the same price right now. It's just just every year by CPI. So when the contract was first started, it was about forty-two dollars, and over the five-year period, CPI has, has adjusted to forty-three ninety-eight. Move to approve. Are moved by Commissioner Daly, seconded by Vice Mayor Samaglia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Moving on to the next item, which is the recyclable processing services. Okay, uh, again, um, this is a, a agreement to uh, process our residential recyclables and with us today is Robert Herrera from Waste Management, Alice Gonzalez and Tom Crummy from Waste Management and from the city side and, and that assisted in the negotiations with this contract are Peter Foy Peter was the Director of Recycling Contract Administration in Broward County for over 25 years, has done a lot of these recycling agreements over his career. And of course, Angelo, Angelo right there, um, 
can address any procurement code issues that, that came, that got us to this point today. Um, I guess it's important to note and to lay the, the foundation for this presentation that um, a, a number of factors are contributing to this situation we're in today. And I want to read from this white paper that was distributed by the city of Sunrise and that was put together by Sunrise Weston, um, where it talks about foreign markets have reduced the absorption of recovered materials, creating supply of such materials in excess of demand, and contamination included in single stream recycling has increased processing costs and reduced the quality of recycled commodities. As a result, a growing volume of otherwise recycled materials is being rendered unusable and therefore diverted back into the waste stream for disposal rather than being sold in the recovered materials market. I just want to lay that as a foundation for the presentation today. So a little bit of history. Um, back in 1989 through the year 2013, again, 26 ILA cities committed their res residential recyclables to the resource recovery system facilities called a MRF, a materials recovery facility. Um, at the time in the 90s, Browning Ferris industry uh, managed the MRF and it was a dual stream processing, which means you had a two sort system, one for papers, one for all the other recycled materials. Uh, back in 2009, uh, Waste Management now was running the, uh, the MRF and we, basically the entire county converted to a single stream operation, which is putting all your recyclables in one, one bin or one cart. Uh, in 2013, at the end of the ILA, City of Deerfield Beach established a contract with Sun Bergeron through a competitive bid process and that again required single stream processing a, a location that was favorable to Coral Springs, which is here in Deerfield Beach. Um, in 2014, on the waste product kind, we switched to roll off carts, which again was intended to maximize recycling. Um, but then in 2015, waste management acquired Sun Bergeron assets, and Deerfield Beach went out for bid earlier this year and received no bids in response to that solicitation. As a result of that no bid submitted to Deerfield Beach, uh, the city sent out a bit of its own. Uh, we, Angelo can probably speak to this better than I can, but certainly the procurement side of it, he, submitted, he released a expression of interest where we got two responses, one from Waste Management, one from Waste Connections. Uh, we had a, uh, a formal bid thereafter where we had a pre-bid meeting Staff heard comments from two of the prospective bidders. We basically adjusted our, our bid, uh, considering some other comments. Uh, we issued a revised bid with a $75 processing fee guaranteed. Still received no bids. Uh, at, that, at the bid opening, Barbara Herrera was at that bid opening. I asked her would they be willing to sit down and negotiate some terms and conditions. She said they would. And at that time, we got approval from the city manager to begin negotiating with waste on agreements to bring before you today. Um, some of the mitigating factors on and limitations for recycling these days is our single stream limits our ability to take it just anywhere. For example, in Palm Beach County, they still have a, a dual sort system, which means they can only take uh, deliveries in two separate loads. So trying to send the material to Palm Beach County was not an option for us. Uh, and as we all know, waste management controls the two single stream processing facilities in Broward County. And the, the collapse of the recycling markets are what, again, are causing us in all the cities in Broward County to be in a situation today where we're trying to stop purchasing re recovered materials. And there's a definite lack of domestic mills in this country. So the market collapse. So the basis for the recycling room is based on average market value. And, and the first column um, on the left is ONP stands for old newspaper. And you'll see that in fiscal year 14, the revenue for old newspaper was, was 62.50 a ton. In April 18, which is the, the worst month we've seen ever, that number has now dropped to 17.50. For mixed paper, the same scenario has happened where in 14, the value was at 52.50 a ton, it has now dropped to $2.50 per ton. And, and those revenue um, numbers come from a, a in, industry-wide uh, website, which all processing facilities use to, to gauge the value of the materials. So under this proposed agreement today, the processing fee increases from 51.16 to 
to $96 per ton. Um, there is a, a supplemental payment to the contractor if the average market value is less than the processing fee. So for example, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute on the last bullet on this slide. Um, the, the contract requires that a, a, a waste composition study gets done every six months, which pretty much sets the, the distribution of materials in your residential recycling load. So if there's more commodities in that load that are valuable, your AMV is higher. If you're a heavy paper load, um, as we saw with the value of the paper going down, then the average market value for that load in general is less than it would be otherwise. So that's how you determine the value of, of each load. Um, one of the big problems we're having, along with every other city, is contamination. Um, our contamination rate is 70%, which means out of every load, 70% of that is considered garbage, which gets pulled out and sent to a landfill. Part of our program going forward has to be better education to, to advise the resident on to recycle right, which is a campaign we're going to be really gearing up shortly. Um, the revenue sharing on this new agreement is such that should the value of the, AM, should the AMV rise to $120 a ton, we would split that 55 city, 45 waste management. Should it go above 120, we split a 65 city, 35 waste management. Should it go above 140, uh, it would be 75% city, 25% waste management. Um, as a matter of reference, the value five years ago was $139 per ton. Today, as in April of 18, it's $83 per ton, the average market value. So given the, using the April 18 market value, which is about $80 a ton, $16.40 per ton, which is the difference between the processing fee in 96 and the current market value, $16 difference. So you have to pay about $131,000 per year to waste management to be able to uh, receive those recyclables. That translates to, on the annual solid waste assessment, which right now is $248 a year, to an additional $460 a year <coughs> to the annual assessment to maintain the recycling program today. So, our options, okay, these are, these are two options that I'm presenting to you today, but, but I, I have to tell you that, again, referring back to that, that white paper that was re released by the City of Sunrise, there are more options that we did consider the last year on what to do. So the first option that was written in the paper was negotiate new agreements with waste management. Well, that's where we are today. Another option was negotiate an agreement with the municipal waste hauling companies or another solid waste recycling company to deliver residential waste to one of the waste management facilities or a processing facility in Dade County. We have talked to Waste Pro about hauling it somewhere, and uh, one scenario was hauling it to St. Lucie County. Um, waste Pro never really followed up on those terms and conditions, and frankly, I wasn't prepared to bring an agreement to you or an amendment to the Waste Pro contract that had never been tried before. So that's a scenario that we may want to keep in context given the next hauling contract bid or renegotiation with Waste Pro, but I didn't feel at this time to try to transfer the materials to a facility in Pompano Beach and have it hauled 90 miles to St. Louis County for the first time by Waste Pro was a viable option to present to you today. Another option was, was contract with a recyclables processing company outside of the South Florida region and long haul to that facility. Again, that's a scenario I just mentioned to you about hauling the materials to St. Lucie County. Not a great option given the, the hauling charges to get there. Dispose of recyclables as solid waste until a recycles processing contract can be secured. Well, that's the Willibrator option. You take those 8,000 tons a year that we generate in residential recyclables and you take them to Willibrator, you're paying $43.98 a year, a ton, I'm sorry, for that material, which equates to the second bullet on the slide. $352,000 a year, or approximately $12.35 added to the solid waste assessment. So my, from a strictly financial point of view, it still makes economic sense to send it to the waste management MRF as compared to just trading a solid waste and having converted waste to energy. And the last option they have in this report is discontinue recycling programs altogether. And I'm not here to tell you that's my recommendation. 
So under the current agreement, the real value we have in this agreement is a 120-day termination for convenience clause. It's not a termination for cause, it's a termination for convenience. 120-day notice, we can get out at any time. Uh, the economy requires that we do a waste composition study every six months, which really will recalibrate the contamination rate in the contract. So we're hoping that through a good, good public education campaign, we can start to reduce that contamination rate, which lowers our out-of-pocket cost. We need to keep an eye on the markets. If the markets continue to decline so bad that it really makes more financial sense to take it to waste to energy, where you get 58% credit, we'll come back and, and discuss that policy decision with you at that time. And finally, waste management is partnering with us in a recycle right campaign to reduce contamination. So, our recommendation today is to execute the agreement with waste management for the processing of residential recycled materials. Any questions? Commissioner Dill. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, <clears throat> first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Rich and Peter and crew and Angelo and I'm going to try as brief as possible, but I think it's really important that certain things are, are, are raised at this point. Um, thank you all for the work that you've done. Um, I don't know that two years ago we, we maybe saw this uh, coming as, as um, our options being as limited as, as they are. I think at that time when I had spoken with city administration, um, about it and raise the issue. I was told, oh, we're, we're not next in the, in, in the contract uh, coming up, so we'll see what other cities do and we'll kind of follow suit and evaluate our options. And then you guys kind of, kind of got, got thrown into it to say, hey, come up with something and everybody in the county is basically watching us. So I appreciate the time and effort that you've put into that. But I, I wanna raise a couple things that are concerning to me and, and Mayor, if it's all right with you, I'd like um, the folks from Waste Management to be able to come up and, and address to the best of their ability some of those concerns. Um, because I remember, as, as would uh, Commissioner Vignola, when the tipping fee uh, was about $100, right? And then uh, a new entity came into being, and that was Sun Bergeron, and the, cut, and the tipping fees cut in half. Not disputing market uh, rates, I'm not disputing the market fell out, I'm not, I'm not disputing any of that. I'm not disputing the fact that we have limited options. Um, and frankly, I have nothing against waste management. I, I, we've had a long-term relationship with the folks at waste management for years. Uh, previously, that, that, that relationship spanned 25, 30 years. Um, and in some way, shape, or form continues today. So I just want to be very clear with my comments. It's not, it's not anti-waste management here, but there are certain concerns that I have because a couple months back, I had started hearing about certain promises that had been made um, as Sun Bergeron was, was divided up, or whatever you want to call it, uh, bought out, what, whatever technical term you want to use, that certain assurances were made by the buying entity, which is waste management, to um, either the Attorney General's office uh, or the Department of Justice or to whomever that certain conditions would be met as part of the buyout. Um, and when I asked what, what letter everybody kept referring to, our, our, our city attorney's office actually made a request, a, a freedom of information request, was told there was no letter, was told nothing existed, was told no assurances had been made, and then lo and behold, about a week ago, surfaces this, this, this letter that didn't, I guess, exist. Um, so I've given each one of my colleagues a copy, and the manager and the clerk, a copy of this letter and here are some of my concerns, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll read the, the highlighted portions um, from this information. So, so just to put this on the record, this is a letter from the Attorney General's office stating that at this time they're not going to challenge the purchase, um, but that the letter expresses this office's present enforcement intention only. From the information and representations made by the parties, our understanding the transaction is as follows, and I'm, I'm on page two now. Further, should any JV customer choose to extend the term of its existing JV agreement, Sun has consented to any such extension for one five-year renewal term on the same terms, conditions, and prices as the initial term. Sun's JV obligations as a result run through at least July 2023, after which Sun has the option to consent to additional renewal terms. Second bullet. 
to ensure that Sun meets the JV obligations, Waste Management has entered into a subcontract with Sun to provide access to facilities and services through the July 2nd, 2018, and for at least two five-year renewal periods. Additionally, through at least July 2023, Sun will have access to facilities and services to support any new JV customers and any existing JV customers that choose to receive new bids. Bullet point three, the subcontract does not change the terms and conditions, including pricing, of the JV's customer contracts. Next highlighted bullet, should waste management breach its obligations under the subcontract, waste management will be required to pay liquidated damages equal to 1.5 times the amount of performance bonds provided by the JV or Sun under the JV customer contract. So here's my concern. I want to make sure that we don't have an option uh, to extend our existing contract um, in some way, shape, or form. And I understand that there are other cities now making this same request, making this same demand for assurances, um, you know, trying to do the same thing. Um, so I just want to make sure before we jump into this brand new contract today that we have, we have done that, because I, I have concerns. I mean, this is, this is a recent development. This is as recent as, as last week that suddenly the missing document that never existed exists. Um, so, you know, if, if I could, Mr. May, I'd like, I'd like Waste Management to come up and address the letter um, and, and see what they have to, have to say. Who's here from Waste Management that would like to speak? Good morning, Good morning. Mayor, uh, Commission, and other members present. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here and thank you for considering Waste Management. As the commissioner has stated, we have a long-standing relationship, and we certainly look forward to maintaining that relationship. Just a couple of things before I get into the, the nuts and bolts of, of the subcontract. Uh, uh, waste management did not purchase the joint venture, and waste management did not purchase uh, either of the partners in the joint venture. Waste management purchased certain assets of one of the partners, in this case, Sun, which on the facilities, Sun now is LGL. With regards to your concern about the Attorney General's letter, uh, there is a subcontract between Sun and Waste Management. Sun used to own the facilities, Waste Management now owns the facilities. And that subcontract stipulates what you've stated, that Waste Management will be available to continue to provide services to Sun, not the joint venture. In that subcontract, there is a provision that states that the recycling contracts may be adjusted for pricing and other terms uh, to reflect market conditions and other conditions as well. That subcontract was submitted to the Department of Justice and it was submitted to the Attorney General's office. We never got anything back from the Department of Justice nor the Attorney General's office that there was any kind of, of concern over that provision in the subcontract. It's page 11 of the subcontract. So I, I hope this kind of, in a nutshell, clears up what your concern is. Uh, by the way, waste management is not a party to any of the contracts that the joint venture has. We simply provide the services to one of the partners in the joint venture. Or, oh, pardon me, to the joint venture through one of the partners. Sure, just before we go, can we just get your name and your position just for the yes, record? Yes, uh, Alex Gonzalez with Waste Management. I'm Public Affairs Director. Great, so Alex, you know, so if, th if that's the case, then, then I'd like to see the provisions of the subcontract. Um, because what you're telling me is that that does not include the pricing provisions as stated in this in this letter. And I think we need to kind of clear this out a little bit because the letter that I'm reading from right here doesn't say, you know, it does say there was a subcontract, but doesn't say anything about separate assets or assets of only one of the partners to the JV. This says Sun's JV. Um, so I, I just want to be able to clear that out. And I, I think here, here's my issue, uh, Mayor and, and Commission. I, I, I I spoke to the mayor of, of Deerfield Beach just this morning, and I know one of our concerns was, um, legally speaking, could we continue 
the existing contract if Deerfield Beach didn't continue there. Since we piggybacked off of Deerfield, if Deerfield decided not to renew their contract, did we have an option? It was told to me that based on our city attorney's in, uh, interpretation, we would not have the authority to, to renew the contract terms if Deerfield didn't. Well, we don't know what Deerfield's gonna do. Um, and as of this morning, what the mayor had told me is they have made a demand letter, they have sent a demand letter to uh, Sun Bergeron or to Bergeron, I don't remember which, which entity, demanding assurances that they have the opportunity to avail themselves of a contract extension. Um, I don't know if that was sent to waste management. I don't know what entity, maybe we can find out. Maybe we should do the same. Actually, I would ask that we consider doing the same so we protect our rights under that, under that existing contract. My concern here is, again, not an issue with waste management. I understand that the market conditions are what they are, but I wanna make sure that we're fully vetting and availing ourselves of any options under the existing contracts, which frankly is better for our residents. Um, and, and want to make sure that if these are actually assurances that were made, that, that they're held to. Um, and if they don't include pricing, I'd like to see that. Um, so, so, I mean, what I would ask is, is two, two separate things. Um, you know, this, this contract will ultimately, the existing contract will expire as of July 3rd. Second. July 2nd. So what I would ask, we've got one more meeting in June, um, maybe if we could delay uh, making a decision at this point until the, the second meeting in June, giving us two additional weeks to see what Deerfield Beach does, uh, to see what our options are under the, the letter, uh, and what, what, what waste management can produce in, in response. Are you taking this as motion table? Uh, Continue to, date it, uh, continue to a date certain of our second meeting in June, which is July 20th. June 20th? June, June 23rd is our next meeting. June 20th. June 20th. June 20th? Correct. Which All is right. It's a non debatable motion. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. I'll second. All right, seconded by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. This is tabled until that time. Did Rich want to, do you want to wait? Did Rich no, want because to we already had the motion okay. stable. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Just one more thing for the record. As of close of business yesterday, waste management had not received anything from the Attorney General's office. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, that moves on to Commission Communications. Commissioner Carter, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to... Uh, Put it out there that the senior advisory board has put together a uh, individual survey to determine the needs of seniors in the city so it'll probably start rolling out more towards the fall but I wanted you to be aware um, we're trying to get it on the city's website right now so I do look out for that is anybody gonna talk about tonight hello okay tonight there's a party out in front of City Hall called sips and bits for sips and bites or is it bits whatever five to seven I hope you come it's another opportunity to meet your neighbors and have a good time in our new downtown if you anytime you want to talk or have questions I'm at 954-998-4186 thanks Mr. Mayor Vice Mayor Smagler thank you Mayor uh, I'm gonna take a couple extra minutes this morning a couple of first of all uh, today is June 6th and I think we all know what June 6th is D-Day and there's a gentleman that lives in, uh, well, he just moved to uh, Parkman, but uh, he's been living in Coral Springs for many years. His name is Joe and Sarah, and he was with the force that went into Normandy, and he was at Omaha Beach uh, with the Navy. So if you see Joe around town, uh, you, you see him a lot, say something to him. But I want to just say, you know, remember what happened on June 6th. We lost a lot of men and women that day. Opioid Task Force. I got some really good news. We, we had Monday night uh, meeting and the uh, Opioid Force working with, uh, Task Force working with uh, our marketing department has come up with a, uh, a, a, P a PSA that we will be showing with the mayor's permission at the next commission meeting, which is only a few minutes, but uh, we would love to have as many people in the city watch this over the air, come here, whatever. And then from th from that forward, we're going from that day forward. We're going to be going out and visiting uh, schools and associations and uh, seniors and uh, showing this opioid uh, uh, this opioid PSA. So 
So uh, please, uh, I want to mention that the Memorial Day, the program we had, we had to move it because of the water over at Veterans Park. We moved it over to the, uh, to the uh, gymnasium and it was an absolute, absolute success. And I don't know how many of you guys went to some of these uh, career days with the kids at the elementary schools and I did, and you know, you meet with them for an hour, eight to nine in the morning, and then it takes you till 12, one o'clock in the afternoon to come down because these kids are amazing. They do a great job for us. So uh, to contact me, 954-801-2004, uh, and I can be uh, using Dan's social media. You can get me at elsamaglia at uh, callsprings.org. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, ma'am. Commissioner Vignola. Um, and, and by the way, uh, do put it on the agenda so we can show that PSA at the next meeting. I want to bring um, some of your attention. Back, back in the January 17th meeting, we had a discussion on a property on Sample Road. Um, a petitioner was out there wanting to park cars um, in an empty lot. It was a brownfield designated lot. Um, my concern at the time was they were not uh, meeting our current city codes and they came out there and a petition sat there at the podium and not this one but at the other building um, talking about how uh, they were going to meet all the different conditions that we wanted um, including you know, no vehicle storage on the grass you know, improving their landscaping and um, maintaining and trimming their existing landscaping to the city's landscape standards um, driving back uh, sawgrass yesterday getting off at Sam Perot, and I've, I've been out there a lot um, but it just gets worse and worse. There, there's been no improvements. My concern when they came in front of the commission was the fact that, you know, when they, when we go ahead and, and someone wants to um, see a reduction in their fines or something with code violations, we go out there and inspect and make sure the property's up to current standards first before we um, reduce it. Well, they came in front of the commission, made zero improvements to the property, and, and said, we'll do it. Don't, we haven't done it yet, but don't worry, we'll do it down the road. And, and it looks terrible, and it's one of the worst looking properties uh, in the city. Um, I know staff is on top as I've had the discussion with Mike and for a little bit now, um, but I want you guys to know, and I want you guys, and I'm going to um, give the city attorney some photos uh, that I took yesterday because I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of fed up with it. It's, it's a main way into our city. You drive by it all the time. There's been absolutely zero improvements to that property, um, you know, and, and the part that really upsets me is that, that at that meeting on January 17th, we had someone from the corporate park. Um, come and speak and felt like not everyone was being treated fairly and equally well the business that i had brought up that was cited for parking on their own grass um and the grass right across them that no one was using inside the core park not on a main road um that business is now leaving the city of coral springs because of the parking issue um so so here we were with someone who's you know hiring people in the city and all that stuff you know for the the business purpose inside the corporate park being treated differently than someone on the outskirts and exactly what i had uh, brought to your guys attention um ended up happening and, and it's uh it's a shame and I, I'm, I'm embarrassed for it i know staff's going ahead and they're trying to uh, rectify it but that was on us um other than that um i know you guys did all the career day stuff and i know skip you went you went to a few and i don't know about russia i know lou was at i think every single one of them um but i went to uh five high school graduations in four days i went to six overall and um yeah, it's, it's nice to hear some of these stories of the, the kids and the successes in our community and, and um, our teachers and things like that. Um, it's the end of the school year today. Uh, starts getting out, I believe, at noon today across the community. So please understand, if, you're, if you are watching this, you're going to be driving around. Be careful. Kids are going to be a little wild and crazy because I think we all were the last day of school. So um, with that, if anyone's got any questions, comments, concerns, please call me on my cell phone at 954-632-7544. Fisher Dill. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, you know, I, I got the opportunity to, to speak during one of those career day um, events at uh, Country Hills Elementary, and they actually, I, I got there, I didn't realize how uh, they were doing it. They had the entire fourth grade assembled in the, in the cafeteria um, and got the opportunity to speak about what we do as a municipality and uh, give them some of, the, some, some of the more interesting facts about the city and in relation to our parks and, you know, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and they all, for the most part, stayed awake, which was impressive in and of itself. Um, but one of the things that I always try to stress, regardless of what, um, what grade level I go to speak to, um, was, was reaching out to, to your elected officials, even, even as fourth graders. You know, we use the example all the time of the second graders who uh, were the impetus behind us getting a new city flag. 
And I think it's important that not just that group of students, but everybody in the city recognize how responsive we as a body try to be, um, and as a community we try to be. So I, so I might, in my usual fashion, I, I gave them a story about a young man who was able to get a bill passed in Tallahassee, uh, and he was 12 years old. And they're, you know, ooing and eyeing, and I'm, I'm saying, you can be our eyes and ears out in the community. Uh, at Hunt Elementary last year, I went out there and, and gave the same uh, spiel, and one of the students wrote me a letter said, Mr. Daly, we play in the park across the uh, street and the, and the water fountain's been broken and we would love if, if we could get the water fountain fixed. And within a week or so, Rich, uh, not Rich, Rick was awesome and, and had the water fountain replaced. And, and you know, that's, that's being responsive to even our youngest constituents. So um, following that, I got a letter from a, from a fourth grade student named Alan who thought it was a good idea that we, uh, He'd like anyone eight and above to learn CPR emergency and set up first aid camps across Coral Springs and more first aid kits in schools. And I'll, I'll take it from there. So um, I thought it's a really great idea and I actually talked to our fire chief and uh, we're gonna reach out to the school and see if after the beginning of the new school year, these will all be fifth graders now at, at Country Hills, uh, we may be able to go out and do a, a presentation um, and do a basic first aid and CPR course for, for their students and, and teachers, and it's because of students like Alan who, who reached out. So I'm gonna respond in, in a letter to him and thanking him, and then we'll get that set up, and, and I'll, I'll, of course, share that information with all of you if you'd like to attend, but um, I just thought that was pretty neat. So with that, Mr. Mayor, if anybody needs to reach me, my cell phone number is 954-778-3304, uh, ddaily at coralsprings.org, and you can find me on any of the social media outlets. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, a Broward Leaders Roundtable on Climate and Resilience uh, has asked the city to appoint one of our commissions as a liaison. Uh, I'd like to see if maybe one of you would like to volunteer. Someone use your name, Mr. Daly. Um, Who used my name, Mr. Mayor? It depends on when <laughs> they meet, when do they meet? Because I think it's very valuable. But I thought we had two city staffers that were going. Yeah, well, they want a commissioner. Uh, do, we so know, do we know who, when they meet? I, I don't know when they meet. Commissioner Daly? I would nominate Commissioner Carter, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Commissioner Carter? I need to know when they meet. I don't know when they meet. Well, I can't accept without knowing when they meet. I mean, I'm interested. Do you know when they meet? Can we, can we bring it back in the next meeting? Yeah, I'm interested, that's fine. but I... That's I, probably a good idea, so we'll bring it back to know next when they meet. But I, I think it's definitely between Commissioners Carter and Daly. <laughs> All right. Could you make sure that this is on our next uh, yes, agenda right. item? And I'll pass this down to you so you don't forget. Uh, and then finally, uh, Thank you. I'm proud to report that Coral Springs has been listed as the number five best city in Florida to live in. Um, and uh, they talk about our education, our cleanliness, our low crime rate, and um, I think it's something we ought to be very proud of. That's um, for the whole state, right? What? That's, That's for the whole the, state? For the whole state. So, Mike, did you see? Yes, sir. Yes. So, congratulations, Coral Springs. And with that, Mr. Goodrum. Mayor, uh, time flies when you're having fun. So, I'm coming up on my one year uh, anniversary of the city, which uh, would trigger my annual review. I provided a memo to the commission with some significant accomplishments this year. Be glad to answer any questions. All right, any commissioners have any comments? I do. Uh, I, uh, Commissioner Carter. I think that change is difficult for anybody and I think the acceptance of change is difficult and I think you've done a good job in that transition. And I wanna say I think you've done an exceptional job for the city. Um, you couldn't come in at a harder time. Uh, here we're building a new city hall and we have this chaos at Marjorie Stillman Douglas High School, uh, which I thought was handled uniquely by yourself, uh, having been the recipient of some bad words from some other elected official in this county. Um, and Mike, I, I think we should probably rate you above uh, expectations and I would uh, ask the rest of the commission, Commissioner Daly. I was going to make a few comments, Commissioner Mayor. What? I was going to make a few comments first. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I just want to say, Mike, um, 
you, when, when the commission ultimately uh, chose you, it's because I think we wanted to, to go in a, in a, in a different direction. Um, I think we wanted to um, take a chance, right? And, 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 and I think the body saw the drive and determination in you to, to swing for the fences. And I think that's what we've done. And you know what, that, that hasn't been easy in all respects. You, you've, you've brought us some items that, <laughs> that, I, that I wished could be spaced out a little bit more in terms of uh, us having to make these decisions, but they're important decisions. Um, and that's what we, you know, I, I, I'm gonna, this is a joke by the way, this is what we get paid the big bucks um, <laughs> to, to do, is to make the tough decisions. And you are the one that shepherds those decisions and brings those to us and the opportunities to move this community forward. Um, and, and with that being the case, I think you've done an extraordinary job given the circumstances. And, and this body over the next year and two years and three years and four years, are, is going to have to make some really tough decisions. Um, and I think what is most interesting to me, what is most important to me is the difference in the level of transparency, right? Um, you don't paint a rosier picture than what actually exists and I appreciate that um, because I need to know what the facts are and if the facts are uh, serious and we're gonna have to make some tough decisions then we need to know that going into it. Um, and I think that's a testament to you. But I wanted to share a quick quick story with everybody because I think it, it will tell you uh, the type of person that, that Mike Goodrum is. Um, I went to the, uh, was it the Martin Luther King luncheon? And so we have a, we have a table up front that's usually, you know, the department directors or, or and the, the elected officials and, and they're all the way in the front and, and we're sitting there and it's the city attorney and I, I turned to John and I said, where, where is, where's Mike? Is he, is he not coming? Is he not here? And they announced him and sure enough, there he is at the table all the way in the back. He said, what's he doing? And he was just, he was relatively new at the time, but he had come in and he sat with a table full of uh, j j staff, the, the boots on the ground, to just get to know him, to get to know what's going on in the city. And I, I think that speaks volumes um, of, of the manager um, and his commitment to not only the, the city, but the city's employees, right? The folks that fight the battles on a daily basis. I think that says a lot about you as a, as a, as a person and as a leader. Um, so I, I think you've been extraordinary. Um, I, I don't necessarily look forward to a lot of the tough decisions, but I know that they'll need to be made uh, nonetheless, and you have continued to plow through the course that we, we, have, we have asked you to, to, to do in terms of economic development, in terms of developing a downtown, um, and I hope that that, and I have no doubt that that will continue. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Vignola. Um, you know, I know Dan, Dan kind of talked about some of the tough times coming in, but you know, Hurricane Irma, um, having to go ahead and hire two deputy city managers, um, the new long range planning model and bringing in Lyle and, and bringing the commission together on a unified vision. Um, a developer for downtown that's actually seems to be going places. Um, and most, most importantly, and, and Dan was talking about your, your brutal honesty and just, hey, this is the way it is and, and going about it. I, I, you know, sit, sitting up here for years and you know, everyone kind of wants to go ahead and move around some things, whatever. and, and but you're, you're straight up, hey, listen, this is the way it is. It's up to you guys what you guys want to do. And really bringing that model of, hey, this is the board, you're the CEO, and you're going to go ahead and execute whatever we want to do um, has, has been amazing. Um, and, and hiring a new police chief, too. That was another tough thing you, you had to go through um, all, all within a year. And, and I, uh, um, just so everyone knows, he has asked for a reduction in a pay increase compared to what he would be entitled to if the commission were to say he uh, exceeds expectations. I think you've absolutely knocked it around out of the park. Um, and I think uh, hiring you is probably the best decision this commission uh, has ever made, so. Commissioner Smagler or Vice Mayor Smagler. Uh, uh, <laughs> watched you <laughs> for the last year. Mike, you're amazing. Everything that you've done has just been, you know, for the good of the city. And I think I want to highlight what the mayor said earlier, uh, how you handled uh, the Parkman situation and to follow up on that, uh, you, you made us proud. You made us really proud. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're the best, buddy. Under standards, uh, with this type of situation, uh, Mike would probably be entitled to it. Uh, raise of about 5%. Uh, he understands that this community uh, has some fiscal responsibilities in the future and he has asked 
instead that he be raised 3%, um, which I think is admirable. Uh, I think it's something that shows that he is concerned about the fiscal responsibility of the community. Um, so I would ask for a motion. Mr. Vignal. I'll move that we um, give an evaluation that exceeds uh, standards and have him where he wanted to be at 3% on the fiscal. Second. Okay. Uh, opposed by Commissioner Vignola, seconded by. Move, move. Move by Commissioner Vignola. Uh, seconded by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. Hearn. Wow, that's awkward. After such a negative review, and then I have to speak. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, I would just want to, just briefly, I, I'd hate to take the shine off, Mike. You know, we had the city manager on our commission of former government, now this. Um, uh, but, uh, Mike, you're... you're straightforwardness, um, some would say lack of nuance, uh, but your candidness uh, and your dedication is, is your pleasure to work with. One of the um, achievements that wasn't mentioned though, and I think it's certainly not the least achievement, um, eventually he did get his license plate to be a Florida license plate, so it's all done. Thank you. There, uh, I have nothing else to report. I couldn't I, afford I, any I, more tickets. So. I, I do have a question. You know, in the last month or so, I've seen more Texas license plates <laughs> around South Florida. It, does that say something? Mayor, I've actually been told that Texas has one of the lowest vehicle registration costs, so the rental companies are registering them all in Tennessee, Texas, oh, they're states. Oh, okay. Well, now I know. Okay, with that, we are adjourned. That's definitely so. Okay, I'm going to put it on the stage. Great. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs>
tomorrow is the day. I'm going to light up the pep rally like it's July 4th. Schools on edge after a week of threats at several Carl Springs schools. A young girl in a Little Mermaid shirt is hauled off in cuffs from Sawgrass Springs Middle School. She's facing a very serious charge, accused of threatening to bring an AK-47 to class. So this one at Coral Glades High School. A 16-year-old girl is accused of posting threats on Instagram as well. something law enforcement takes very seriously. Don't ruin your future. Think before you post. Report suspicious activity to your school resource officer, school faculty, or family member. As always, call the Coral Springs Police non-emergency number if you see something suspicious. 954-344-1800. Stuffed animals and toys can be fun for your baby when he's awake, but they should never be placed in his crib. Blankets look comfy, but he could get tangled up in them. Even pillows, which seem harmless, are not safe for a baby. Keep the room temperature comfortable and dress him in an extra layer of clothing if necessary. Keep your baby close by, but in his own crib. A baby sleeps safest alone, on his back, in a crib. For more information, visit myfloridafamilies.com slash safe sleep.
We are so happy to be out here for our Touch a Truck event today. Uh, we're really focusing on children and young adults who have special needs. We have our police officers, firefighters, uh, specialty units, and we're also registering kids for a special database so that we can familiarize ourselves at the police department with those who have special needs in the community. Well, we're having Touch a Truck and we're trying to uh, reach out to families of children with special needs and young adults. We're hoping to get them to become more familiar with the fire department and the police department and what we can offer them and their families. We're giving them the opportunity to sign up for a database so that we can have information that we might need in an emergency to help them and their children. All the special needs children of the community have come out to get familiar with the police and the fire departments and are having a really great time today. I, I did make a point of registering him today because Darren is a nonverbal. So anytime we can have him registered in the local database is a great thing. God forbid something may happen. Everybody knows what his uh, needs are and it'll assist us in finding him quicker. We are thrilled with the turnout we've had here today. I think we have over 150 children and young adults with special needs who have joined us here today. And uh, this is much bigger than we had anticipated and we'll be doing it again next year. Mosquitoes will bite day and night, so protect yourself with these tips. Keep mosquitoes outside by shutting doors and covering windows with screens. Use EPA-approved insect repellents anytime you're outdoors. Cover your skin with long sleeves and pants. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in water. Just a bottle cap of water is all they need. So drain, refresh, or cover anything around buildings that can hold water at least weekly and put away outside items that aren't being used. A message from the Florida Department of Health. We have, we have a code red at J.P. Tarvala High School. Okay, do you know where the person with the gun is? No. Not in my school. 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 Not in our school. Report suspicious activity to your school resource officer, school faculty, or family member. As always, call the Coral Springs Police non-emergency number if you see something suspicious. 954-344-1800.
There have been reports of FEMA inspectors asking for personal information or charging for services such as damage inspections or repairs. These are scams. Scam artists may pose as government officials, aid workers, charitable organizations, or insurance company employees. Follow these steps. The only time you should provide personal information is during the initial application process for FEMA help or to follow up on that application. FEMA inspectors only require verification of identity. Ask for that identification and don't be afraid to hang up on cold callers. Don't sign anything you don't understand or contracts with blank spaces. If you suspect fraud, contact FEMA's fraud hotline at 866-720-5721. Hi, I'm here to tell you how you can register for disaster assistance from FEMA. If your home or apartment was damaged because of the recent severe storms, register with FEMA by going to disasterassistance.gov or you can call FEMA at 1-800-621-3362. Money may be available for home repairs, temporary rental assistance, and other needs not covered by insurance, such as replacing personal property damaged by the severe storms. Once again, to register with FEMA, go online to disasterassistance.gov or call FEMA at 1-800-621-3362. Once again, that's online at disasterassistance.gov or by calling 1-800-621-3362.
Is this the place we want to raise our boys and our girls? Look to your heart. Look to the sky. Look to the sky. How can I make this place a better one for you and I? Protect our future. Protect our land. Let me. My name is Al Raza. I'm a local artist and operating a studio here in Coral Springs for more than 25 years and I'm a resident of the city as well. What inspires me to paint can be sometimes a very tricky question to answer. It's a lot like breathing. It's something you have to do. Once you start doing it, you find that you can't stop. And if you feel any kind of emotion or anything inside, you have to get it out. I have an art school in Coral Springs uh, where I maintain my studio. Uh, we refer to it as an atelier, which is a basically an artist-run studio. I have a collection of work on display at the new City Hall. The collection will be on display for about six months, and it features a collection of mixed-media abstract paintings. Nine one one. What is your emergency? Um, my water just broke, and I think I'm giving birth. The baby's out. Yeah. Okay. I want you to be sure that the umbilical cord is not wrapped around the baby's neck. Okay. All right. He's crying. Yes. Okay. That's a good sign, Judith. Yes. Honey, I know. I'm really sorry, sorry that you're going through this, but I'm here with you. Okay. You're doing awesome. Okay. You're doing awesome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Once upon a time in a land far away, there was a dog named Zero who wanted to be a superhero. She asked everyone what to do to become someone new. Superheroes should have a shield or a cape. When they make a quick escape. Choose your power, strength or speed. Because this is what a superhero needs. Most important, grab your mask. You need a disguise to complete your task. When you come to the rest, you take a bath. Your name is Super Diva Dog now. Your mission is to save the day. If you see trash, throw it away. And everybody lived happily ever after. Tomorrow is the day. I'm gonna light up the pep rally like it's July 4th. 
school's on edge after a week of threats at several Carl Springs schools. A young girl in a Little Mermaid shirt is hauled off in cuffs from Sawgrass Springs Middle School. She's facing a very serious charge, accused of threatening to bring an AK-47 to class. So this one at Coral Glades High School. A 16-year-old girl is accused of posting threats on Instagram as well. something law enforcement takes very seriously. Don't ruin your future. Think before you post. Report suspicious activity to your school resource officer, school faculty, or family member. As always, call the Coral Springs Police non-emergency number if you see something suspicious. 954-344-1800. Stuffed animals and toys can be fun for your baby when he's awake, but they should never be placed in his crib. Blankets look comfy, but he could get tangled up in them. Even pillows, which seem harmless, are not safe for a baby. Keep the room temperature comfortable and dress him in an extra layer of clothing if necessary. Keep your baby close by, but in his own crib. A baby sleeps safest alone, on his back, in a crib. For more information, visit myfloridafamilies.com slash safe sleep.
We are so happy to be out here for our Touch a Truck event today. Uh, we're really focusing on children and young adults who have special needs. We have our police officers, firefighters, uh, specialty units, and we're also registering kids for a special database so that we can familiarize ourselves at the police department with those who have special needs in the community. Well, we're having Touch a Truck and we're trying to uh, reach out to families of children with special needs and young adults. We're hoping to get them to become more familiar with the fire department and the police department and what we can offer them and their families. We're giving them the opportunity to sign up for a database so that we can have information that we might need in an emergency to help them and their children. All the special needs children of the community have come out to get familiar with the police and the fire departments and are having a really great time today. I, I did make a point of registering him today because Darren is a nonverbal. So anytime we can have him registered in the local database is a great thing. God forbid something may happen. Everybody knows what his uh, needs are and it'll assist us in finding him quicker. We are thrilled with the turnout we've had here today. I think we have over 150 children and young adults with special needs who have joined us here today. And uh, this is much bigger than we had anticipated and we'll be doing it again next year. Mosquitoes will bite day and night, so protect yourself with these tips. Keep mosquitoes outside by shutting doors and covering windows with screens. Use EPA-approved insect repellents anytime you're outdoors. Cover your skin with long sleeves and pants. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in water. Just a bottle cap of water is all they need. So drain, refresh, or cover anything around buildings that can hold water at least weekly and put away outside items that aren't being used. A message from the Florida Department of Health. Not in my school. 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 Not in our school. Report suspicious activity to your school resource officer, school faculty, or family member. As always, call the Coral Springs Police non-emergency number if you see something suspicious. 954-344-1800.
There have been reports of FEMA inspectors asking for personal information or charging for services such as damage inspections or repairs. These are scams. Scam artists may pose as government officials, aid workers, charitable organizations, or insurance company employees. Follow these steps. The only time you should provide personal information is during the initial application process for FEMA help or to follow up on that application. FEMA inspectors only require verification of identity. Ask for that identification and don't be afraid to hang up on cold callers. Don't sign anything you don't understand or contracts with blank spaces. If you suspect fraud, contact FEMA's fraud hotline at 866-720-5721. Hi, I'm here to tell you how you can register for disaster assistance from FEMA. If your home or apartment was damaged because of the recent severe storms, register with FEMA by going to disasterassistance.gov or you can call FEMA at 1-800-621-3362. Money may be available for home repairs, temporary rental assistance, and other needs not covered by insurance, such as replacing personal property damaged by the severe storms. Once again, to register with FEMA, go online to disasterassistance.gov or call FEMA at 1-800-621-3362. Once again, that's online at disasterassistance.gov or by calling 1-800-621-3362.